Hi there. My name is Miss Claire and I am a teaching artist with Louisville Visual Art. So I'm really excited to be here with you today, even though we're not in the same space, but we're going to make some art together and I think we're going to have a pretty good time. So today we are going to be making accordion books. What's an accordion book? Well, they call it that because the way that it's folded and created, it looks like an accordion, like the musical instrument. So it's a different way of making a book. And I'm going to show you today the way that I make accordion books. And I'm going to show you some of the examples which I have made recently. So this is a book I have called Party. Uh, you can see that it has raised letters I've cut out. So this is how I make my covers. And I'll show you how I do this in case you're interested in doing it in a similar way. You can also see that I have these patterns. So this is actually done with crayons and watercolor. So it's a resist because wax and water don't mix. If you draw with crayons or oil pastels and then you put watercolor over it, the colors will still be visible. So you can see I've drawn some things in white with white crayons and I've still been able to see them once I watercolored over them. It's pretty cool. So I also try to keep in my theme. So because this is a party theme, I have balloons and streamers on this. So it's called party because it's a many, many, many layer cake. And you can see all sorts of different layers for each one. We've got some sprinkle layers, some different colors, different flavors. And then I also have balloons at the top. So this was sort of a birthday party themed one. This one is called Strata because it is layers of the earth. You can see in keeping with my theme, I've made layers as my decorative pattern. So starting at the top, we've got some above ground, some earthworms, some rocks, a cave, a pretty imaginary underwater scene, and then magma, center of the earth. This is my center. You can see I have a theme that I try to stick to. And when I'm trying to come up with the theme, I think about what would be fun to draw. I think this was the first one I made and it's called Pond. You can see that the pattern I used is, is water lilies and things you might see in the water. And I think when I started this, I was thinking, I'd really like to draw some water lilies and some turtles. So I thought, I'll do a pond scene. So you can see we have a cat drinking water at the top, some cattails. We've got a frog in the water, a turtle, another frog, snake. So you can also notice that all of my books go like this. They are vertical, but you don't have to do it that way. You are welcome to do it this way. I think I started this way and I've just really enjoyed it, but I could change it. And the last book I'm gonna show you is called Camp. It doesn't have the letters on the cover yet because it's not quite finished, but again, it has watercolor over crayon. Look at that yellow still popping right through the dark blue watercolor. On the back, it has a plaid blanket. So, Camp, oops, wrong way. It's a camp scene. So we've got the night sky, roasting marshmallows, some fireflies, um, a campfire, hot dog, and then our blanket, which has some ketchup and chocolate for our s'mores. So thinking about a camp scene there. So these are some of the books that I've been making. And as you can see, I'm using markers, but you can use whatever you feel comfortable drawing with. So if you prefer colored pencils or crayons or anything you have around, you might even think about adding some magazine pieces or something to collage with. I have a little collage bin in case I figure out something I want to do with a couple of pieces of collage in my book. So let's get started. We're going to talk about materials to make accordion books. So paper. This is the paper that I have, but yours does not have to be this big. If you have smaller pieces of paper, that will work just fine. I'm also going to have an eraser and a pencil because I don't like to do something without drawing my pencil first. I know a lot of people feel that way. I have some watercolor. If you don't have watercolor, that's okay. I'm gonna show you how I do the technique on the cover, but you could decorate your cover any way that you'd like. And if you don't have watercolor, maybe you can try the technique that I'm describing another time. Glue stick for attaching pages and our cover pieces. Crayons for making our cover. Some cardboard also for the cover. So if you're curious what I was making my cover pieces with, these that make these books really strong, it's cardboard inside of my paper. So that is why I have this piece of cardboard. Now I also have some markers that I'm gonna to use to decorate some of my theme. So the first thing we are gonna do is we're gonna make prepare our pages for our accordion book. So 
because our books are meant to be long, even if we go this way, we need pieces of paper that are going to be long, but not super tall. So I am going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to cut it in half. Now, to make sure that both halves are the same size, I'm going to fold it hot dog style first so that I make sure I cut it pretty evenly. And that means I'm going to line up the corners before I fully fold it so that I can make sure it's very even. So now I have this fold in the middle that will help guide me with my scissors, which I may not have mentioned, but these are very important for this project. All right, so now I have one long piece of paper. It is time to fold this. So because it's an accordion book, and you saw how it looks like an accordion, we need to make sure that we are folding it the proper way. And I will show you how to check. So when I'm folding mine, you can see that my books are not all the same size. This is longer and this is more rectangular. And that's okay. There doesn't have to be any specific size to these. If you're using a smaller piece of paper, you can make yours as long as you want. And I'm gonna show you how I add more pages. So just because my paper is this long doesn't mean I can't add this and make it twice as long. Now, to fold our accordion books, I'm just gonna eyeball mine. So if you wanted to make yours square, you would just basically fold the first piece to be as square as you want. So this piece is gonna determine the size of our book. So I'm not gonna make mine square. I might make mine a little bit more rectangular. And I'm gonna follow the sides to make sure I fold it really neatly. Because the neater you fold it, the neater your book will look in the end. So this is a good time to be paying close attention to the way that you are doing things. All right, so I'm lining up my sides to help me guide. And then I am going to fold it. All right, so I got my first fold. Now for an accordion fold, I'm gonna turn my paper over and fold it again. Now I'm gonna use this part also to tell me the end that we just folded, where to stop so that all my pages are folded the same size. So you can kind of see where I'm gonna try to line it up. See how I'm trying to keep this pretty even? Remember that the neatest, the neater way we fold it makes it a neater book. So this is a good time to be paying lots of attention. All right, now let's check and see if I'm folding this right because it should look like an accordion. Looks pretty good. Okay, so now I have these two and now I'm going to turn it over again. So every time we make a fold, we turn it the other way. All right. So I also have a little bit of an extra piece here, which is actually gonna help us because here is a tip. When we're making our accordion books, we wanna have an even number of pages. And an even number means two, four, six, eight, you know what, two pages probably, but six or eight or 10, because if we have an uneven number, we won't be able to put the cover on quite the same way. So what we want is for our front page and our back page to be facing each other. So if this is my front, this is my back, you can see how they face each other. And that means I'm able to put a cover on the back of each one. So let's count how many is in this book. One, two, three, four, five, six, an even number. So let's see how many I currently have. One, two, three, four. Well, I have four, so I could stop here because my last two would face each other. That's fine. But I might wanna add a little bit more because four pages doesn't seem like quite enough to me. So how would I do that? Well, remember how we cut this hot dog style and we made sure it's the same size? So I am going to, if I have four, I probably want a couple more pages, maybe two more pages. So I'm gonna look at this because it's already the same width and I am going to mark it for one page width and then another. Now I might wanna add a little bit extra to be able to attach it to a cover. So. I'm 
is our extra page. Now, we have this extra lip here, which I'm going to fold back the same way, just like we're continuing our accordion book. And then I'm going to attach it to this new piece, and you're never going to notice that it's got extra pages added. All right, so see this little lip I've just created? I'm going to put a little glue on this side and attach this new piece. So we're going to keep folding. Now remember, you could do this a few times if you wanted to. If you have smaller paper, like if this is the paper that you have at home, maybe you want to cut this in half, hamburger style, but you might need to do a couple of these to make it long enough for your liking. So imagine you could just do this a couple of times. Remember to use your book as a guide every time you fold it because you want your pages to be the same size. All right, now I have added my extra pages and I can keep folding. All right. Now I'm using the sides as a guide and I'm also using the edge as a guide. So let's see how many pages I have now. And I have an extra lip here too, but that's okay. If you have an extra lip like this, you can leave it on because it's probably a good thing to fold it under when we attach it to our covers. All right, let's see how many pages I have now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Now I have my accordion book inside ready to go. Now I was thinking about themes that I would like to do. And as you can see, I have very specific themes that I work on. I was thinking I'd make this about outer space because that seemed like something I might want to do. I, I could have some imaginative space planets, maybe some spacecraft, maybe some stars. So I think I'm going to do that. And I folded my extra tab down just so I don't draw on it and then later I don't get to include that part in my book. So we're going to spend a couple minutes creating our books. Now remember, when we get started, there's two sides, right? There's this side and then there's this side. But if you recall, we wanna have our front page and our back page facing each other so that when we close the book, they're facing. So that means I wanna be working here, right? So that when I close my book, those are facing. Now, if I worked on the back, pages opposite, this is kind of where our covers would go. So you wouldn't wanna put that there. So think about how you can make it on the inside, remember, facing. Now, I had all of my books going this direction. You don't have to, you could have them go this direction. And think about all the other things you could do within this book. Maybe you have secret pockets in your book. Maybe yours is a scene of a street where all the shops are, where all the houses are. Maybe you are doing um, an enchanted forest where we're seeing all of these animals and creatures or maybe it's a theme park and we're looking around seeing the scene. Or maybe it's not something quite so specific. Maybe you have a looser theme than that. It's up to you. So I'm gonna start drawing mine with space themed things because that's what I'm thinking is gonna be fun. You also might have noticed that a lot of mine were entirely colored. You do not have to do it that way. That's something that I was doing and these took me a lot longer because I was spending a lot more time on them you're welcome to do but also if you don't want to color everything maybe you have lots of white paper showing through which is totally fine so the way that I start because I like to do mine vertical is I will think about what kind of composition do I want here and because this is a fun book it doesn't have to be that specific maybe I don't have to think about it being a perfect composition all in the beginning so I might start somewhere in the middle and I'm gonna start with a pencil so that I can erase if I do something that I don't like very much and I am going to think about, maybe I'm really close to a planet. Because something else I think is really fun about these accordion books is that you could change your perspective. So with pond, we are looking down on a pond. But maybe we're really close to something. So in the middle of mine, you might be able to see a drew in pencil. Nope, it's a little white. But I have started a planet that's really big. Maybe I'm really close to this one in the middle. So think about what kind of theme you want to have. Oh, I actually might, maybe this will be outer space with cheese. Maybe I'll make some big holes, like, like a moon. Maybe this is our moon, it's a Swiss cheese moon. Now 
And don't forget, you have all of this space to work. So don't make sure that on every page you have something pretty exciting because all of the pages count. So I want something different on every page. That would be my recommendation to you. So if I look at camp, the top page has a sunset. It's unique to this page. My next page has fireflies and a marshmallow, unique. My next page, flames and a hot dog. I try to challenge myself to have something different in each panel. This part, most of the fire and some logs. This one, some logs and some fringe. And in this one, I have the ketchup and the chocolate. And when I say panel, I mean each folded page. So think about how you have so much space. Why not use it all? Ooh, I think I also need a rocket. So I think in this part, I am gonna put a rocket ship. And I'm gonna make like an old 1950s rocket because maybe this is a future pass. So maybe it's got some, some things that remind us of old movies, but some things that remind us of the future. And I'm gonna start coloring mine. So I have these metallic markers, which might be fun for a space theme. And then I also have some regular markers. Now, because I have this spaceship that's shooting out flames in the back, I am gonna color some of these flames. So maybe you can see what I've already sort of started working on here. Oh, not very well. Let me do a little bit more coloring and I will get back to you so you can see. So let's see. I would love to see what kind of themes everybody figures out to work on. I've seen some pretty cool ones made before. I remember someone making a different world that was all very candy colored themed. Oh, I also remember one that was a very, very, very tall hamburger, sort of like the cake one that I did, and it had all sorts of toppings. So every page was a bunch more topping. Imagine also that your book could be as far back or as close to something as you want it to be. So like for my cake, I'm very, very close to that cake. But with the space that I'm doing right now, I'm going to be pretty far from a lot of this because space is so, so big. So think about perspective and what perspective you have in your book. All right, I'm going to color my spaceship and then I'm going to show it to you. I think you'll be able to see it now. These uh, metallic markers are pretty cool. Something else you might think about doing, if you aren't sure what kind of theme you want to have, maybe you draw things that you like. Maybe it, the theme is itself just things that you enjoy or something about you. Because this is your book, so it can be anything that you want it to be. I don't want to use black because I might color space black. Purple. I'm about to show you my spaceship that I drew. And you also might wonder, why are you starting to color before you draw the whole thing? Well, this is mostly for your benefit, so you can see what I'm doing. But also, because my canvas size is fairly large, it's really okay if I decorate some of it because it might help me figure out what else I'm gonna add to this because there's a lot of space. All right, so here's my rocket ship. Remember how I said different things in each panel? Well, probably I will have something very specific up here. Maybe I'll have some like island colony planets. Um, I've got my Swiss cheese pieces here. So this is how we are making our accordion books. Now remember, I know I said this a few times, that we want our front and back to touch. So if my front and back touches, that means I'm drawing on the correct side of my accordion book. Absolutely. I'm trying to think of what else would be really great to have in space. You know, something else you might think about is maybe you don't have to do this on white paper. You might have a fun time if you have some construction paper at home assembling that into your book. And like I mentioned earlier, if you have some collage pieces you might want to include, that could also be pretty neat. So here is a piece that I had cut out of a, new, uh, of a magazine a few days ago. 
um, and it is different televisions. These might be pretty fun to have these television screens put right onto my moon. So I think I'm going to cut these out and see if I can get them to attach. You also might start thinking about what you are going to use uh, for your cover. Now I'm going to show you the way that I make mine, but you don't have to do it quite the same way. Um, but if you want to make yours um, a pattern that is themed a lot like the one that I was making, um, think about what would be a pattern that would be related to the theme of your project. Okay, so I've cut out a little um, television. It might be really cool to have well, maybe I'll have some television planets up here. Okay, so I'm going to draw a circle that's bigger than my cutout piece. I'll do it a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe these planets are sort of like bubbles that are holding TV screens. It's kind of a wild idea. All right, so I'm actually going to, I'm going to color this first. The blue metallic marker, because I just feel space is the perfect place to draw with metallic. And I mentioned this before, but you might think about if you are going to collage, collage meaning cutting and cutting up pieces of old magazines or different colors of paper and gluing them together to make a new scene. You might think about, are you going to make some special pockets or some, some pop-out effects, if you've ever made a pop-up card. All right, so I've got my bubble planet up here, and then I am just going to glue this TV, and then I will be adding the other ones too, I think. All right, so because our books are pretty big, these might take a little bit of time for you to finish making the inside of your book. I got my little bubble planet with a television inside. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do a couple more of those for my space theme. But because it might take you a little bit of time and I don't want us to run out of time together, if you wanna keep working on your book right now, you might wanna pause this video so that you can come back when you are ready to make a cover. Because I'm gonna show you how to make a cover. All right, now we're gonna need our book to know what size our cover needs to be. And I think that we, I mentioned that I eyeballed it before, so we're gonna eyeball it again. Now I'm gonna take my piece of cardboard and I want something that is going to be just a little bit bigger than my book. Why? Well, so that my book is nice and protected. See how the paper is glued in here? I have left about this much space around it so that when it's closed, it's really protect, the inside of my book is really protected. So I'm going to lay my book on the piece of cardboard and I am going to eyeball, again, these sort of cuts and these sort of measurings, I mean, doing this neatly is going to make our book look really, really nice. So I'm going to use this pen and I am just going to eyeball. You could also use a ruler if you wanted to. I do have a ruler within reach, so maybe I'll do this once I make some marks. So I've added about a quarter or almost half an inch around the whole piece. So you can see these marks I made. Now I'm gonna make some lines with this ruler. And I'm using a pen on this so it's easier to see because we're never gonna see the cardboard on the inside. We are gonna coat it with, or we're gonna cover our covers with pieces of paper that we decorate. All right, so you can see my size. Now I am going to cut this using scissors. It's a pretty thick piece of cardboard. So if you have trouble cutting yours with scissors, I bet you could have um, an adult help you cut it, or if you if you know an adult that has a, a better blade to cut it. It's actually really thick cardboard. So this book's gonna be super protective. Now I'm gonna to wanna to have two of these pieces that are the exact same size. I'm just gonna cut out one right now to show you how we're gonna make the cover pieces, but 
You essentially want to have two of these. Now let's see if I have made a good measurement. That's pretty good. I think that'll work pretty well for my cover. Now, what about decorating this piece? Because we don't want to have cardboard probably as our cover. Unless maybe you had a cardboard themed book. That might be pretty neat. So, I'm going to think about, because I have a space theme, how I could decorate my cover. Now, I talked about doing a watercolor resist before, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, if you don't have, again, watercolors at home, you can make it with anything. You could even paint it with acrylic paint. If you have acrylic paint, you could paint your um, papers. Now, we are going to decorate the cover paper before we put it on the cardboard because... It's a lot easier to decorate it when it's nice and flat and not 3D like that. So I am going to take my cardboard to see how big should my cover piece be. Now, just like the book is a little bit smaller than the cardboard, the cardboard should be a little smaller than the paper. Why is that? Because we can fold it over on the inside and it can wrap all the way around the cardboard. So I'm gonna leave about an inch. So last time I said the cardboard should be about half an inch bigger than the book. Well, the paper should be about an inch bigger all around. And I'm actually gonna make mine a little bit bigger just in case. So I'm gonna cut this paper. So here is one cover piece. It's actually quite a bit bigger, but that's okay, it's better to have extra than to have our paper too small after we've decorated it. And this would be for my other cover, or my back page, because we would have two pieces of cardboard with two decorated pieces for front and back. All right, so here is my cover to decorate. Now, I am going to, with my crayons, create a design. So I was thinking about with space, maybe I will do some planet shapes with rings. Um, and it doesn't have to be quite so specific because crayons are pretty big to draw with. So I might make something that's a little bit looser. I'm gonna make a, a moon, a Swiss cheese moon. I'm gonna draw this whole thing with crayon. I am not gonna use any um, pencil with this. Okay, I think I'm gonna make a Saturn, silver Saturn. Now remember, you can even draw with white crayons because they will show up through your watercolor. Uh, I think this is also gonna be a great opportunity to make a shooting star. I've got some rings of Saturn. So this is what's what's going on with my paper right now. Now I'm gonna make some shooting stars just because I want this to be more of a background than I want it to be anything specific. Less of a picture and more of a decoration. I like the shooting star motif, so I've got a couple more shooting stars on this one. Um, and you won't be able to see it, but I'm gonna draw some stars with white crayons. The only thing about using white crayons is you have to remember where you drew because you cannot see it very easily. All right, and I'm gonna do maybe some, just some dots of white around because there's stars everywhere. Maybe I'm gonna do the Big Dipper. It's a fun opportunity to do that. I'm just gonna do some dots of white even though I know I can't see them. some dashes for other shooting stars and I know what you're thinking where are the UFOs they're coming next okay see I'm gonna make sort of a classic UFO I think UFO. I'm also going to do maybe some, just some squiggles for some extra fun shapes that can pop through my watercolor. So you can see I'm filling up pretty much my whole page. I think it's just really spaced out, but I'm filling it up. You also can't see my white stars through here. Um, 
But because we're going to paint over this, the more I do now, the more is going to show through when we have our um, watercolor on top. I'm just doing some patterns. Do a couple more stars. Can't have too many stars. I can kind of see them if I turn my head to the side and kind of look sideways, but oh, you know, I think I'm also missing. I want to put a little bit more color in my in my comments. So do some yellows. orange because wherever I put color it is going to show right through the other thing about crayon resist that I think is really fun is that you can use colors that are not the same so if I'm painting something yellow I really don't want to put yellow watercolor on top because I'm gonna lose the effect I'm not gonna see it what I am gonna do though is maybe put black over yellow a black watercolor over a yellow crayon or a green watercolor over yellow crayon. Colors that are not the same because then you get a really cool effect where the colors are super bright right through. All right. Maybe a couple blue stars. Why not? Okay. So now I have made my background. And for the purpose of watercoloring it, I'm going to start right now. And I'm going to show you something that I use when I watercolor. I actually use these watercolor pens because these are really cool to travel with and they're really affordable. If you really like watercolor, you might think about these. They eliminate the need for a cup of water and a paintbrush because there's water in here. So you squeeze it as you go and it deposits water from the tip. So I use these when I travel because I like to do a lot of watercolor. And I'm going to show you a little bit of an example of a crayon resist also. So I'm going to use this for my cover, but you see all of these blue that comes through, that's crayon resist, these oranges and yellows. So that's what we're going to be doing. You can see I covered most of this area with watercolor. All right, so I am going to add, let's like squeeze this to get a little bit of water flowing out. So you can see that when I squeeze it, water comes out. It's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna kind of mix some blacks and some purples, and I'm gonna cover the whole paper, not just where my designs are. Now look at that. Do you see my colors are coming right through? So that is what we want to be having. We want all of our crayon drawings to come through. I wanna cover the whole paper. also some nice surprises because I can't remember where all of my white areas are. So. Oh, wow, that dark part. Those are really coming through. To cover the whole, whole, whole paper. And I, when I watercolor, I sort of like to mix it. So that's why I'm doing a lot of like blues and purples and blacks here. Cause I like the ability to kind of blend and um, have different colors come around. I'm gonna switch these cause one of them has more water than the other. And I just think this is so fun to watch all of my drawings pop through. I mean, that's pretty exciting to me. Wow. And you can do this with all sorts of drawings. Imagine doing, let's say, an underwater picture where you draw everything with whites and yellows and greens, and then you use like a dark blue on top. I mean, that would be so, so cool. The possibilities are pretty endless with um, watercolor crayons. And I think I did mention this before, but you can also use oil pastels if you have those because they are even 
oilier than crayons, meaning they are going to resist even more. So, now I'm doing this a little bit more quickly than I might, just so you can see what my whole picture looks like while I'm still here with you. Um, got a nice blue purple thing going on here. Add a little bit more black. All right. I like this. This is cool. All right. So here is my pattern. Mine looks a little bit wild. I probably could do a little bit more blending of watercolors, but you can see everything coming through. So it'll be a nice background for my cover. Now, because I just painted this, it's also going to be pretty wet, which means that I actually probably want to let it dry before I actually put this together. So I'm going to show you how to put it together a cover, but I'm going to be using this other one as an example so I can let this dry. Because if my paper, if I'm trying to glue it, it's not going to stick very well. It might tear. So I'm going to put it aside, let it dry. All right, so this is our cover piece. Now, to put our papers together onto our cover piece, First, I'm going to trace again, like I did before. I'm gonna think I want about an extra inch coming around. So. All right, so I've got about an inch, right? Now, put this on the inside like this. And this is the easiest way to do this, actually. Um, we are going to make this almost like an envelope to fold it over. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to glue the back of this cardboard on so it stays in place. Now remember, with a glue stick, it's not about how much you use, but about the pressure, because it dries pretty quick. Okay. Now the way that I like to cut this like an envelope helps me to fold it really, really easily. And the way that I do that is, on these shorter ends, I'm gonna make them almost like the tab of an envelope. And then the long sides, I'm gonna make those pretty flat. So we're gonna cut the corners so that this becomes really smooth. So you might be able to see the short, oh, the short ends, they have a diagonal line and the long side has a straight line. Shows what you, I'm gonna cut this and see, you can see what it looks like once I'm pretty ready. I know I've said this a couple times, but these are the important steps to try to do very neatly. Because then when you're looking at your book later, it's gonna be really clean. The edges are clean, you put together well. This is the part to really spend some time um, trying to fold things carefully. So this is what it should look like. Looks sort of like an envelope. Now, the other side looks like this, the outside. Now I'm gonna fold all my sides just to give them a good practice fold so that they know where they're going to train them. So I'm going to fold one at a time just so they have a little bit of a preparation. All right. So you can see it's pretty ready to be put together. Now, um, we are going to use a glue stick or white glue. White glue actually works really well also. And what I'm going to do is I am going to do the long sides first because we made these nice envelope corners so it would look really neat. So the short sides will go last. So I'm going to put glue on my long sides. And like I said, pressure is important. I'm actually going to glue this and then I'm going to put it under some books for... I don't know, maybe an hour, so that it really, really sticks well. All right, 
They give it a little bit of pressure, but it's it's wanting to jump around. Now, I'm going to put a little bit more of this glue on both ends. And if you're using heavy paper, I'm using pretty heavy paper, white glue is probably honestly your best bet. But for the sake of right now, I'm going to use a little pressure from the table to push it. And then I am going to put it under a little bit of pressure. So you can see this actually looks pretty neat. And then when our book is done, yeah, it's going to need a little bit more pressure. You can see it's going to go right in the center here. So we're going to have a nice little border for our accordion book. So this is one of our cover pieces. So remember, we would do this two, one more time so that we have the two pieces. Now I am going to stick this under a book down here to let it dry. And I'm going to show you one more technique that I use on my books, which if you like it, you could try it too. So with all of my covers, I have these papers, um, letters that I had cut out. And I have done it twice so that they have a shadow. And I tried to use really contrasting colors. So I'm gonna show you how I make these shapes and then I glue them on top of my cover. So I try to find something that is contrasting. So I found this paper that's, it's white, but it's got some neat little flecks of color. So I'm just gonna make my first letter for space. I'm gonna trace with a pencil. And I use a really plain font. Okay, so you can see I have just drawn an S. Now, I'm gonna cut this out. You might also notice I did it right by the corner. I don't have to go in very far. And I save myself a lot of paper. Now the way I'm gonna make a shadow is I am gonna trace this exact shape again. Okay, so I have an S. Now, I have a collage bin that I keep at home, which is something you can do if you find papers that you want to keep or anything like that. So I throw stuff in here when I find it that I want to use. Like here's a scrap that I'm going to be able to use right now. So I'm going to take my S, I'm going to trace it. I've lost my pencil. Oh. Now I'm tracing the exact shape of the S I did before so that it matches up perfectly. So every letter I make for my covers, I do this. I will, I will cut it out two times in two different colors. And again, this is where being really precise is very helpful so that our, our letters are very neat. Now, if you don't really like cutting, cutting things out with scissors, this may not be the project for you, but you might surprise yourself because I have done a lot of practicing with scissors, which is why I'm pretty quick. Okay, so now I have my two S's. And the way that I would put these on a cover, I'm going to show you on the camp cover so that it's easy to see. So I would glue the bottom one down. And sometimes I play to see which one I like better on the bottom or the top. Because the way that I am making it a shadow is I'm just putting them a little bit off center. So you can see with these, all of the yellow pieces are a little bit further this way. And all of the pink shapes are a little further this way. So that is how I made mine. So if this is a technique that interests you, have at it. The last thing I'm going to say before I leave you for now is the way that I attach my pages inside my book. Because we're doing a project that requires a little bit of waiting and a little bit of waiting for things to dry, it's a little bit harder to show you all the steps at one time. 
but here's the inside of my book. Remember how I said this tab is, is helpful, this extra tab? We can glue it down here because this is going to be glued to the inside of the cover. So remember, our faces should touch the inside of the book. A little bit of pressure did all the good. Now the way that I would glue this is I would put glue on the back and then center it on this. Oh, look at those nice corners. And then I would do both the front and the back at the same time and put it under a book again so it gets really, really, really strong. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial making an accordion book with me. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, my name is Miss Claire and I am a teaching artist with Louisville Visual Art. I hope you have a really fun time making a creative accordion book.